Welcome everyone with our brand new Titty Talk. We're here totally uh, Corona proof, by the way. Keeping a distance, everything is clean and all. Um, that's why we haven't touched those cookies in the center of the table. <laughs> um, we're here with a new Titty Talk all about stigma. Stigma around feminism. Um, what, what does it say on feminism? Uh, where will we go with these stigmas? Will we, can we even let go of those or not? Um, and that's why I've got some amazing guests this evening. I'm really, really happy to introduce to you Tessel. She's um, creator, creative, also owner, founder of Piss Wife, an awesome feminist art collective magazine and all. It's I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Amrine is also, well, what is she not? Cat Girls Amsterdam, she founded it. Um, she's still, yeah, because I was thinking today, you're a creator, you're a storyteller, you're a maker, you're more than your big, huge impact Instagram account as well. Um, and next to you, Amrine is Zaire. Hi. Yeah, <laughs> same for you as the other two ladies from journalism, also activist. Um, you're now working at Vileine as well. Um, you're investigating the most op epic, awesome topics. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. it is. Um, spoken word artist, well, I can go on and on and on. You're selling me very well. Yeah, but you guys, yeah, really, really like, I think, well, we'll come to that later, but I think you're three people um, who add a big, big, big value and like something to do. Um, the current debate um, on all topics, not only feminism, and feminism is, of course, in all topics as well. Um, but yeah, feminism, it's something that we see as well on the Titty Mag, um, on our Instagram account, we post a lot of um, art. And um, sometimes when we hit certain topics or we really specify what it's about, we get a lot of debate. And we like to have a dialogue as well, but of course, sometimes it can be a little rough. Um, what, ac what, according to you guys, is something that is a st like stigma around feminism today? What is something you guys experience? Mm, well, Tessel. I have to say that in I have actually very carefully picked my bubble to be yeah. <laughs> mostly feminist. Um, so in my day-to-day -day life, I wouldn't say I really um, am confronted with the stigma or surrounding feminism that much. But I, you know, there's so many different strands of feminism, and I do really feel that people who are, um, yeah, people who call themselves feminists often don't disagree with each other. Mm -hmm. um, so there's definitely stigmas like within feminism, I would mm -hmm. say, um, or like, yeah, I'm not sure if, whether that really is a stigma. But now, uh, I think today or yesterday, uh, uh, Adichie, a famous feminist, um, came forward saying that she was um, a big fan of J.K. Rowling's transphobic essay about how trans women are women. Yes. Yeah. And that's like a big debate, uh, which is like transgender inclusion in feminism, I think is very important. And I think it is in feminism if transgender people aren't included. Mm -hmm. But I definitely think that that is a very heavy topic. And um, yeah, like I think the whole gender debate is something that does receive a lot of stigma because people feel like, oh, it's too, too complex or whatever. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's one, one of the big stigmas in feminism at, at the moment. And for you guys? Well, everything you said actually, and with with Kakos and Amps, street harassment, the debate is still there, or at least the debate. It's still the stigma and the victim blaming of it just a compliment, she was wearing this or that. But as you said, I also don't really experience that much of a stigma because I also carefully make my bubbles. But within fem feminism, world itself also with the genders and the like white feminism and black feminism and brown feminism there's just one everyone needs to be included but I do still hear and feel and get the comments like oh but we're already equal and you mm. guys are just whining and things like that where do you hear those uh, mostly mostly Instagram actually mm. on the streets not that much as in conversations face to face but I think people are a bit more yeah, how do I say that they don't dare to say that soon that soon in face to face because they you know who you are. When's the last time you had a conversation face to face? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean so you mentioned that I think it's interesting. It's definitely worth some research on how Corona, COVID nineteen 
is exasperating already existing, um, how you say, distances between groups, mm -hmm. right? So you are, both of you mentioned the reason why we don't feel that much of a stigma in feminism is because we carefully yeah. pick our bubbles. I was yesterday thrown out of the bubble when I was at my little sister's birthday and my uncle and my cousin were having a debate on, I'm just gonna say it because I think it's so personal and it just shows the problem so like aptly. Um, they were having a debate on um, uh, domestic violence and basically my cousin had said something like her friend had come to her and said that her boyfriend had hit her and my uncle said, oh, well, what did she do? Mm. And like instantly I exploded and I just could not understand how he could ask us a question. Yeah. Yeah. And I, re I really, I was like, you, this is so, this is irresponsible. Mm -hmm. Like we are your cousin, like how could you ask something like that? Mm -hmm. And that's really a moment where I realized like there are spaces where this is like a no brainer yeah. and there are spaces where this is like, not even like people still think that that's okay to ask yeah. mm -hmm. you know what i mean and i think the difficulty of feminism today is how do you cater to the in the, the inward struggle mm -hmm. yeah. of like feminists not really agreeing with each other mm -hmm. and sort of out of the bubbles that divide sort of opening yeah. so you're having two different debates on two different yeah. levels yeah. and it's really difficult to um switch yeah and yeah. and sort of because you're so used to the academic language of Indi Dadichi and stuff like that, and then you have to turn to your uncle and explain why yeah. you don't ask a woman why she got beat up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and that's really difficult. So I think. How it, did the evening end? I had a very bad feeling in the pit of my stomach. I still have. I, I'm gonna be honest. Like, I still have a bad feeling about it. Yeah. But is that because you couldn't explain yourself the way you wanted to for him to understand, or because you were thrown out of the bubble? Both. Well, I mean, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, upset about being thrown out of the bubble, I think it's good. I think it makes the, the things that I make and I research and that I write, it makes yeah. it better. Okay. Mm -hmm. Being being mindful of what the actual audience looks like. Mm -hmm. But I definitely felt awful that <laughs> that I, in the moment, indeed couldn't voice myself properly mm -hmm. because I was so used to Twitter discourse, which is totally different than this. Mm -hmm. And that just, the fact that he asked that so yeah. blatantly without really, yeah. I don't know, so yeah, have conversations with your family and find out how they really feel about stuff oh, because yeah. they might not actually feel the way you think they feel. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's necessary that everyone um, th thinks the same, like, in fa like family members, or can you all say, okay, I'm sorry, but well, I don't want to say like cancel them, but perhaps cancel them or say, okay, <laughs> I'm not gonna God. convince my grandma of 90. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because, what, what do you think? Because I'm an idealist, you know, my ideal world, everyone has to eventually agree and work together and come together, or do you think that's naive to create that in our period of time that we're living on this little bulb yeah. called the earth? I mean, I, I would also definitely say I'm a, a big idealist, but there's just a level of my personal comfort that I need to make sure, like, I would love to debate everyone and, like, um, explain everything and why I think a certain way, why I have certain opinions, but sometimes it is super exhausting mm -hmm. or it just costs me, like, as someone who has been in, a, in an abusive relationship, I feel like many times when people are very ignorant, like that comment, like, I wouldn't have the emotional strength to mm -hmm. go into that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so whenever I do feel able to, uh, I will definitely do that, and also, like, like the right opinions, you can, yeah, I mean, I have my, my ideals and people can have different ideals and they can still be valid, mm -hmm. but I feel like when it comes to violence, you know, yeah, that's right. not yeah. up to debate right. for me yeah. personally. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you think there are certain like boundaries, like you're saying violence, are there certain boundaries that people can like, yeah, have to agree on? Like, hmm. I think, so the, the horrible sort of, I'm trying to make this make sense in my mind because mm -hmm. this is about people's humanity, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And the idea that my uncle can ask that, that question is, 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 is not necessarily relevant uh, because he's not necessarily in a position of power yeah. in that moment. But the fact that police officers, for example, ask the exact same thing when women try to go to the police to, to get their case heard, to go to a judge, those people are in power. So the minute those ideas become pervasive in a society, then it actually becomes problematic yeah. because you're, number one, not holding the people accountable that are using violence, and number two, 
the, the people that are, um, how you say, that are um, the women are not being heard. So my the question I ask myself is, when when does it when does it matter when someone has um, a dangerous opinion, and how much power do they need to have for it to be highly problematic, and when would and when do I step in? Mm-hmm. Do yeah. you start get like where where yeah. where does it need when does it make a difference if I were to say something? Yeah. Now? Yeah. yeah. Do I add something or am I just gonna make myself tired? Yeah. Like yeah. I don't I don't know. I don't Do know you think about it, Amrin, when you're in a discussion perhaps on Cat Girls Amsterdam that you're like you think about before responding or Yeah, always. I always say you need to pick your battles because as Dessa said, it's so so drowning, emotionally draining, I'm sorry. And um also, as Saida mentioned, it's the battles. It's it depends which battle it is. If it's within feminism, you know what you can say. You have the mm-hmm. words. You know that everyone understands. But if it's outside of that, mm-hmm. I always struggle to explain myself. Mm-hmm. Also, um, my friends, my boyfriend, I don't know what to say because something that I say, they don't understand it because they're not in that world. Mm-hmm. And also, when it comes to street harassment, I think the personal, the boundaries of a catcall and a, com- a compliment are very different for everyone. So I cannot speak behalf on everyone, but the only thing I can is just respect. Mm. Um, but those, yeah, those discussions are sometimes hard because of that, of the personal boundaries. That's so difficult. Yeah. yeah. Also the questions about, do you think there should be a law? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm all about education. Education is something that I'm that I'm a fan of. It's important, raising awareness, teaching everyone, learning stuff, but a lot is something else because it happens quickly and mm-hmm. how do you know if that person if they thought it was a cat call, if it, it made them feel uncomfortable or if mm-hmm. they see, saw it as a compliment. Oh. Yeah. What do you want to add to this as well? Yeah, I was also I, I also agree with you that I think education is a great way to um, you know deal with these kind of topics in in a in an early stage in life. Um, and and uh, what what Saida said uh, about like um, knowing when to pick your battles. It's also so difficult because in plenty cases when people say something problematic and you don't want to like exhaust yourself by explaining it, you you just like let it slide for one time, but when it comes to something like um, partner violence, for instance, or sexual abuse, the the numbers are that one out of five people mm-hmm. will have experience with this. Mm. So you know, um, <laughs> if, if you're like at a table and someone makes a sexist joke or a rape joke or whatever, and you're like, okay, not today, I'm just not gonna deal with this, then there's a, a great chance that someone that's present yeah. is hearing that and mm-hmm. is like seeing right from his or her or their eyes. Um, like rape or abuse being laughed at, being mm-hmm. normalized, um, you know, not being called out when it's happening, and that is so painful, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's a very difficult dilemma. Like when you speak up, when you choose your own comfort, um, yeah. And all, of course, you can't also be uh, aware always of who is present and what their experiences are. But it's just something I think about a lot, and it's very. You, you can never really have a plain answer that just no. fits you know, all uh, situations, I guess. Yeah. yeah, and perhaps, like, we're not talking about, like, um, your environment of friends and family, but in what way does, like, for example, if you look at the stigmas uh, that feminism has, can, like, um, different levels play a role? Like, for example, we discussed the media, journalism, perhaps other, um, well, levels in society, whatever. What do you think their role is in this? I kind of know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should give an answer. Let me see if I can add to it. I'm just like, like literally today. What really scares me is the rise of fake news, mm. and I'm like, this is, seems to be like a very popular talking point. But like when I say this, I mean this. Like I'm seeing, just today there was a particular uh, for the English speakers. There's a, a, a Dutch politician who has a campaign. Uh, from this and this stuff, and someone made a fake account and started seeing all this sexist and transphobic stuff. Now, like, like so an, that an imposter account, an imposter account. Oh, so wow. that's one. And not too long ago, we had a whole sort of fake account that literally traditional media was picking up on as news. So like, 
it is the media's job to fact check. Mm. And that sounds so simple, mm. but apparently this is very, very difficult because these accounts are opening up so much violence against so many women. Me and so many of us that are on social media, and y'all notice you've dealt with this. Yeah. But that, like, really, it's insane. Even as we speak, and I'm getting called oh by a number that I don't know, oh getting messages God. by a number that I don't know. Oh my God, no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you, you, you wanna add something? I don't know, but I don't know the person. What is it? Manfred Nav. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. It's That's happening. Freaking scary. Yeah, I know, but I still I'm not afraid with my phone number because I've done the TV show Spijzerslikke. Well, yeah. for Dutch viewers, so I know that my telephone number is in the hands of a lot of different people. So. Mm. I don't mind. Yeah. Block, delete, and buy. Yeah. <laughs> but that's actually maybe where the stigma of feminism comes in. That these troll accounts and these imposter accounts are taken so seriously. Yes. Yes. Whereas whenever there is a feminist account, yeah. for instance, uh, last summer there was an account called Abusers and Ale, which exposed yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. institutions. And yes. then right now there's an account called Call Dutch Art Institutions. Yeah. And everyone's so skeptical. Everyone's like, how do we know if it's true when there's like 10 stories about the same old white man like and yeah. abusing no, girls no traditional media picked up no. the abuser story there were a slew of rappers Dutch rappers yeah. that were accused of and the thing is they were very credible because I had heard of some of these yes people. me too I was and like oh the funny thing guy, is everybody in sort of the industry had told me like okay yeah this guy please don't go backstage yeah you know like I already kind of knew and then it came out I was like not surprised yeah, at all we all knew this and the only person who wrote something about it was someone from 3 for 12 who wrote a whole piece about like sexism sexism in hip hop and it became this weird slightly racist, racist yeah. piece yeah. and I was like you could have had like me write it or something like yeah. I mean come on. Yeah. Like, do you not have women that can write pieces on this yeah. to make it a I wrote a piece on for Good One World piece. and I like shared it on my uh, Facebook, which also has like a lot of people from my high school still. And then um, someone messaged me and he was like, "Well, this is a little bit biased." And I was like, "Why is it biased?" And he was like, "Because you're a feminist." So now, like, because now I'm because I'm a feminist, I have these opinions imp- instead of like these opinions make me a feminist. Mm. But do you think that's also the point that like um, because we. It sometimes feels that we're in our in our own bubble that we need some extra um, we don't need it but perhaps it's necessary that like the people who now have the power in the media or like other levels politician whatever sometimes say you are right you're, you're right you're absolutely right what you're saying and that's so wrong what that other person is saying and yes this account we're gonna look at it and what it is and how it even started mm. um do you think it's necessary that like some like institutions who have a lot of power now sometimes back us up yeah definitely <laughs> and then after that why do you think that hasn't happened yet yeah. Big question, and I, I think I, if we I knew that. I still think that people are afraid, or they see the word feminist still as a nasty word. No. I think that even though I hope that we're further and that people are more accepting, but I think that's still a big deal, mm. actually. And at the same time, what I hear a lot is that people are afraid to speak out or speak up about certain things, because I, I also have that sometimes, that you can say something but it can be wrong or it can be interpreted wrong or you can offend people and i think that's something that a lot of people are, are scared about yeah also and the thing is that yeah but you if you're not going to say anything at yeah. all you you, sh- you should fall sometimes but you'll learn yeah yeah and still yeah sometimes you even have the discussions change the word feminist feminism no mm-hmm. why yeah, yeah. I don't lazy. agree, but yeah, it's lazy. Yeah, yeah, it's a lazy solution. But oh, to change it so that it yeah it doesn't have the negative it. like it's vibes or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, or something else. But still, it's lazy, and I think you'll the I problem will be think that's still, yeah. still there. It's yeah. like moving. You know, when you take your your dirt, you have like a bunch of clothes that you need to wash, yeah. and you move them from your bed to the chair. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's yeah. the. But also, I just this. really, I just really get annoyed by that rhetoric, you know, about men being like, oh, I'm not calling myself a feminist because it's for women only. Oh, like, why do you, 
you can just Even care about other people. Did you know that you can just care about other people? Yeah. Like you yeah. can just be empathetic, you know? But also women all women sometimes even don't dare or want to call themselves feminist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. true. Yeah, I think that's because we don't education. Yeah. If you yeah. know the historical yeah. context of like, the, of like how pretty recently you could technically still rape your wife. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rich, like if you know the historical context of the state of women, of the, what trans women are going through, mm-hmm. like that, the, if you know the historical context, you, would, you wouldn't even blink about calling yourself feminist. Yeah. yeah, but that's also the thing, because I hear a lot about, yeah, but how, oh, what was it? About feminism and calling yourself a feminist, that a lot of people say, yeah, but how can someone not call themselves a feminist? As she said, but that's because the lack of education. They right. know. And like you said, a lot of people think, oh, yeah, but it's only for women, 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 women. But it's for everyone. It and it's true. not that we're above men. But it's we're equal to them, to everyone. And that's something a lot of people forget. And sometimes I think they know, but they don't want to believe in it. Mm, and they're yeah. just here to be a pain in the ass. And, and usually when people say those things, it's not because they feel like they want to be a feminist or something. Like I, I barely talk to men who are like, yeah, I would be a feminist, but, but uh, I, I feel like it's only for women. Like mm. It's usually just a reluctance to really, really delve into it and then just kind of dismissing it that way. Yeah. Like, like yeah, uh, oh, it's it's not it's not meant for men, so I'm just not even gonna bother. Mm-hmm. Even though like s- discussing the phrase only just yeah, like you said, it, it just completely it's, it's, uh, distracts from the historical. Concept. It's narcissism. Yeah. yeah, and I also think men are narcissists. <laughs> like I'm, like and like listen, I'm sorry. <laughs> a lot of a lot of men are so used to everything being about them. Yeah, that's and this true. is not just men. Yeah. This is a lot of groups in power. We are, and I. As an able-bodied person, we are so used to the world being about us and for us yeah. and shaped and designed for us that the minute a group comes out and says, hey, we also matter, we're like, oh, no, that can't be true. Yeah. yeah. Like, if you're so used to yourself being the default, and I use the test of able-bodied because that's a situation where the world truly is designed for me. So I sort of, if yeah. you step into that, it's easy to say, oh, yeah, okay, I see why this male is so reluctant to call himself a feminist because, like, I'm used to being able to walk stairs. Mm-hmm. I'm not used to having to ask for a ramp. Yeah, and then when like, someone calls you out or on your privilege, yeah. it's not even really calling out, but just like points to your... Yeah, you're like, why would I... You're like, oh, what did I do wrong? Yeah, 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 yeah. why would I... I mean, I'm not bad. And yeah. that, that test is really like... I did not think about that. That makes you switch. Yeah, I mean, if you... Yeah, yeah you're, we're narcissists. Yeah. Yeah. We are all narcissists, yeah. but also men. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a great book title. Men are narcissists. I would read the shit. <laughs> Men are narcissists. And then and perhaps then- even people would even have like, that isn't bad, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a narcissist. That's what so gets you further in life. <laughs> that's how I make more money than y'all. The age, the wage gap's actually not because you know patriarchy. It's because we are narcissists, and y'all need to be. Yeah, I mean, I would ever. This is a book about me. It's yeah, so cool. It's amazing. Book about me. Let's read it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, but we're almost at the ending of this talk. Um, if we look, if we look at the future, we escalated quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well done. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it kind of sums it all up. Or yeah. no, but uh, if we look at the future, do you think we can eventually get rid of it, stigma. of the stigma? Yeah. I hope so. I mean, ever like completely rid of the stigma in the whole world? I don't. I don't have the mental capacity to imagine <laughs> that. But, but I feel like there's definitely progress. And what's the first thing? If you say something in short, like what? What would be the first step according to you? Well, I and I don't think you can say it in a short, but yeah, I was about to say that's a, that's a tough one. Maybe ask them first. I'm gonna think about it. No. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just just like not and not have feminism be the buzzword, but but like an actual understanding of intersectionality, uh, and and you know, so that people don't see feminism as like some dirty word or something, but grasp that it's a beautiful ideology and way of life. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, I think I, I think that eventually we'll get there, but I'm a bit scared that everyone everyone will be dead. Then you know, like well, and I I I want to hope, but also the thing is that the newer generations are how do I say that nice? 
are more open minded. <laughs> no, <laughs> how no, no, do no. I say that nicely? I'm like, yeah. oh gosh. No, no, no. Are like more open minded and they, mm-hmm. they understand it more. But there's still the older generations who pass it on on their younger yeah. gen- generations, and yeah. then it will be just a cycle going on and on. I think eventually we'll be there, but as Tessa said, the whole world, that's a hard one because like the Netherlands is quite progressive in a way. Of, I don't know, other countries, Saudi Arabia, <laughs> yeah. you know, to put it like that. Um, the first step. Um, <laughs> I, I think what Tessa said. Yeah, I just yeah. grasping that it is something good. Something good, and I think also, you know, how we study economics, like the way we study just things, philosophies. Mm-hmm. I think if we see, because like you say, a good understanding of intersectionality, I don't have a good understanding no. of intersectionality. No, I was about to say, like, like, right when I said that, I was like, I actually, like, I'm sometimes critical of it. No, but, but I don't know any, I mean, the only person who might know something is Kimberly Crenshaw, who coined the term, mm-hmm. but a lot of us don't. And I think if we all sort of, make it this thing that we can all study and be, uh, it would get better. And I also think that what you said about people in power saying something, yeah, that means a lot. Yeah. Like, as much as I call men narcissists, <laughs> they really do have a power to, if, like, what's his name? Um, Hassan Minaj mm-hmm. did a comedy show and he talked about feminism. And it's, it's funny, he made it a joke because he's a comedian, but it had so much power in the moment to joke about why men are not calling themselves feminists, right? Mm. And those things get millions of views. So there, there, there is power in people in power yeah. Yeah. calling themselves feminists. I just have so little confidence in people with power, like especially when you're talking about economics, like the richest people in the world, like they're, e- they're actually evil. They're all narcissists, definitely. Oh yeah, to begin with. Jeff Bezos can oh. yeah. <laughs> my yeah. um, but. I, I do think that you do need to give humanity credit in a sense mm-hmm. that if a man 10 years ago called himself a feminist on a world stage, that wouldn't even yeah, be a true. thing, no. right? And now we have people like Jens von Tricht who have whole yeah, ass yeah. organizations yeah, really made good. for men and feminism and the, yeah. the benefits that they can get out of feminism, yeah. which is super important. Mm-hmm. So there is some slow Definitely. progress. Yes, there is. And I think That's that education true. is a word that is very important. Yeah, education. Yeah. But of course, feminism is big. Yeah. It's a lot. So that won't only solve the problem. And if you three uh, would be a uh, um, prime minister, <laughs> mayor of Amsterdam, <laughs> and ruler of the world, the world yes, I, I, that no. would sort of give a lot of <laughs> solutions. I don't know if I could do that. Maybe. Mm, well, the thing is, I've actually had this conference, and not about me may, being mayor of Amsterdam, but. <laughs> just political stuff is that you always have to compromise yep. yeah always so even though if you have this goal you want to 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 be there I yeah. think oh. the really first step is to beat the favorite day <laughs> yeah. like, don't, like how do we how do we you know a lot about maybe that's oh. like <laughs> different a different <laughs> uh, <laughs> no like yeah so beat be find out how we can actually mobilize people to take part in politics. Yeah, yeah. that's that's a big one. Yeah. That's what they guys do very well. And yeah. also, like with people saying that we need to, um, how do I say that? That younger people really need to vote mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, like I said to Sayuda just now, I don't know a lot about politics, but that's because I wasn't really interested until I became a feminist and everything. I need to mm-hmm. educate myself more. But that's one of the important things that. Politics is a word that also like a dirty word. A yeah, lot of people don't like it, but we do need to learn no stuff so that we can also vote and just we can change the world. You I know? find that so strange. And perhaps to recognize people who you can identify with, who are yeah. politicians, who are like uh, comedians, or instead of seeing always the same person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. With the same words. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Thank you so very much. I think we can keep on talking to like a live stream marathon of like yeah. 50 days and then we're even not done yet. Only with these as food. <laughs> like one person will sleep and we'll take turns. Expedition Robinson, 2 plus. Yeah. <laughs>